Good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this, Not Legal Advice. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. And I, I look at all comments. So whether I like them or not, I look them at all. So feel free to comment and ask questions. Happy to answer anything or help along those lines. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Sorrento Therapeutics and that approach to dealing with naked shorting. Now, I did a bunch of videos regarding Sor Sorrento Therapeutics and Skylex probably around six to nine months ago with JR. We talked about it because they were relevant at the time. I spoke to counsel that was involved, and it's a, a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And for whatever reason, it became... Uh, it was talked about recently, so I decided to do another video about it, uh, despite having done the prior ones. So I will get into those. Now, Sorrento Therapeutics involved the Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy, so this is not legal advice. I'm not a bankruptcy attorney, even though I've been in bankruptcy actions, adversarial actions, have experience there, but it's not my expertise, so take, take it with a grain of salt. Um, before I start, of course, um, do you know the difference between a bankrupt attorney and a pigeon? Well, if you don't, pigeons can still make a deposit on a Mercedes. If you don't pay for an exorcist, you can get repossessed. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. And, uh, today I noticed that, uh, bankruptcy puns were running at a discount 50 cents on the dollar. And last but not least, I saw a flock of Doug, a ducks had filed for bankruptcy. Surprisingly, apparently they had spent all their money on quack. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about Sorrento Therapeutics. So Sorrento Therapeutics, and again, if you look back uh, in my... Uh, prior videos, probably six, seven months ago, we talked about it with JR. So Sorrento Therapeutics is a drug company, pharmaceutical company. It, uh, the way this dispute arose was they developed a cancer drug. Uh, there was another cancer drug by another company, a larger company based in California and LA that had a similar drug. That company bought the rights to the Sorrento Therapeutics cancer drug. There were some agreements between the parties. Apparently there was a dispute because the company that bought Sorrento's cancer drug basically shelved it. Uh, they didn't want it to compete with their own drugs, so they basically took it off the market even though it was effective. You know, questioning the morality of that decision, but that's what happened. So um, they took it off. There was a dispute that arose. Both sides sued each other. There was an arbitration not a FINRA arbitration, but there was an arbitration. Within the arbitration, there was awards for both sides. So Sorrento got an award in their favor, and the uh, company that bought the rights to their cancer drug also got an award based on different claims. And the award of the company that had purchased the rights to the drug was larger than the award to Sorrento. So Sorrento was a net loser. And that put them in a difficult financial position. When that happened, they got shorted up the wazoo and apparently naked shorted also. That led them to filing a Chapter 11. Chapter 11, so bankruptcy, there's three main types. Chapter 11, 7, and 13. 13 is for an individual. 7 is a complete, you're selling all your assets and going out, a business, etc., and 11 is reorganization. So you're trying to reorganization, reorganize the structure of your company. You're not shutting it down. You're not uh, necessarily getting rid of or changing shareholder interests, although it could also to some degree. But you're continuing on in business. You're just changing the debt structure of the company. So that's what Sorrento filed. And within that bankruptcy, there was a lawsuit filed in um, it's called in a bankruptcy, it's called an adversarial action. I've been involved in those. I have, I'm involved in an adversarial complaint right now where I'm representing a party in, in one of those. So it's a lawsuit within the bankruptcy and that's a chapter 11. 
And within the lawsuit, there was a claim of naked shorting. So within that, within that lawsuit, the judge, who is no longer on the bench, by the way, in Texas, he ordered that the brokers disclose their positions, their share positions, short and long positions. Um, so there was an order directing them to do that. They did it confidentially. Then the judge came out and described the results as reflecting naked shorting because there were a lot more shorts than should have been. Then a method was crafted within the chapter 11 to permit the shorts, not the brokers, but the, their shorts, to have an opportunity to close out their positions. A committee was created and the, corp the corporation, Sorrento, had a large say in terms of that committee, but a committee was created to undertake uh, a strategy to permit shorts to close out their positions. And I think many of them did. Um, they bought, basically bought and covered their positions. And it was good for Sorrento because it brought capital back into the coffers of a company that was, because those monies went back to the company um, within the bankruptcy. And it permitted Sorrento to stay in business. Now there's other subsidiaries of Sorrento, including Skylex and other ones, and they're kind of involved in further litigation, but this is involving the same issues about the shorting and whether the judge can uh, call out the shorters, make them disclose their positions and give them the opportunity to cover their positions. So kind of the, to briefly summarize, there's a chapter 11 bankruptcy within the chapter 11 bankruptcy. There was a lawsuit filed within that lawsuit. The court discovered naked shorts and ordered and permitted those naked shorts to cover with the monies that were provided going back to the bankruptcy estate and benefiting Sorrento Therapeutics. It may not have been, you know, I don't know, we don't know what the numbers were because it was all confidential, but I hope to obtain that information sometime uh, this month. But we shall see if I'm able to because of the last thing I'm going to talk about. I thought I would be able to, but now because of the last thing, maybe there'll be an impediment to that. So this is another means by which a company, when a company is wrecked, completely wrecked, uh, that they could pursue bankruptcy court relief without destroying the company and come out on the other side uh, alive and with the ability to function. So it's additional litigation. There's additional litigation with subsidiaries. But in this case, within the Chapter 11, it permitted the company Sorrento Therapeutics, who created a very valuable product to stay in business and also held the shorts, the naked shorts accountable and in essence provided them a confidential means to cover. Now, I would have liked them to have been exposed, but so be it. It did provide money and they did have to cover. Now, the punchline is, so recently, and I think it was Mr. Tobacco referenced Skylex, the Skylex case recently, and uh, people were asking about it. So I'm, that's why I'm doing the video. And then today, I think it was today, either today or yesterday, I saw that the Department of Justice is investigating counsel who were involved in the filing of the bankruptcy petition involving Sorrento Therapeutics. Apparently what happened, so they filed it in Houston, Texas. And I think I told you the original judge who was on the matter uh, is no longer on the bench. And I think there was some uh, ethical issue, perhaps an ethical issue that arose, but they're no longer a bench. So there's a new judge that's sitting in that bankruptcy court. And apparently upon, and, it, and in the bankruptcy filing, it was represented that the principal principal place of business was Houston, Texas. And apparently in, in discovery or in looking at the documents that were filed in the bankruptcy, the Department of Justice, the DOJ, I don't know why they're not working on MMTLP, but the DOJ determined that the location, the actual location of Sorrento Therapeutics, their main place of business was San Diego, California, not Houston and that the Houston address, apparently, 24 hours before the filing of the bankruptcy, the attorneys opened up a 
P.O. box at one of those stores that has P.O. boxes, and they asserted that was the principal place of business. That was a false statement. Um, and that's probably, although I'm not an expert in bankruptcy law, but I think making a false statement in a bankruptcy is a felony. So that just came down, that misstatement about the location of the company and where the bankruptcy proceedings were held. And perhaps in California, the bankruptcy attorney wouldn't be so favorable in terms of exposing the shorts. Perhaps Sorrento knew something about this particular judge. I don't know. But this fact that, that in fact, the DOJ thinks they kind of manipulated the process is interesting. And I do not know if it will affect the, uh, the decisions that were made in this case because it implicates the jurisdiction of the court. And I don't know if it'll impact the ability of other courts to do this in the future because of the kind of the shady manner in which it was undertaken. So that's kind of the history of Sorrento Therapeutics. Within a chapter 11, NACO shorts were exposed, were forced to cover or given the opportunity to cover another method for uh, companies to get out of naked shorts and especially companies that are almost dead. I'm not going to name them by names, but if you are involved in a company and the stock is almost dead, uh, why not? Why not give this a shot as opposed to just struggling because it'll give a judge a chance to expose naked shorts and force a cover. Just my opinion, not legal advice. Anyway, have a great day. Be well. Take care. Hope this helps. If you have questions, please direct them and I will try to answer. Have a great day.